What's up guys, it's Thomas Applestone here, and welcoming you back to my model train reviews. Now I'm sorry it took so long because I was so busy doing my let's plays and all, and now we're, we're back, and this time we're reviewing a sole surviving member of the Cressley V2 class. If you guessed it, it's part of the National Collection as you can see here, and, and by the way, this, this is just a picture of one of the V2s, it's not the one you see today, it's called... Green Arrow in the LNR Apple Green. Now, you may notice I've got it out of the box already, but, but before we take a look at the actual model itself, let's just have a look at the, at the leaflet itself. You can see here it's a V2262 locomotive, which that means it's a prairie, not a Pacific. A Pacific has four bogey wheels in the front, and six driving wheels, and two wheels at the back. And there's new instructions. Ah, we I can take a look at them right now. I mean, you already know about that, but let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. Grizzly designed the first of, the, of this country's three-cylinder 262s for the London and Northeastern Railway. The first engine appeared in 1936 and was named Green Arrow to coincide with the introduction of a special fast freight service of the same name. The three cylinders of steam chest and smoke box saddle were made in one casting with the short outside steam pipes. And as you can see here, it says the V2s were built up to 1941, and with the Elnia Greenleaf, we were the construction during the Second World War, seeing in plain black like what you've seen on my model of Flying Scotsman, you know, when it was in wartime black, when it was unveiled. And it was later, it was in Brunswick Green and BR days. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to go on about that. In the meantime, let's head on and have a look at Green Arrow it's herself. Alright, here's Green Arrow herself. Now, isn't she stunning? Now, mind you, if you notice, she's a, a 262 locomotive which means she's a prairie, like I've already mentioned earlier. Mind you, if you compare that to Flying Scotsman, let me get her off a minute. How would you compare them to? I mean, I know Flying Scotsman has four bogey wheels and has six driving wheels, and the tenders are identical, but we're going to talk more about that later a little bit. In the meantime, let me put it back on here. And let's get Scotsman out of here because I've already reviewed it. Now let's take a look at Green Arrow here. Now a brief history on it. She was she was the first locomotive built in 1936. Well, she was the first V2, and her class were helping the Brits win in the war, and then eventually in BR days, they continued to haul in mixed passenger services like freight and pa you know freight and passenger services. And then eventually she was withdrawn in. Oh well, yeah, it was Green Arrow withdrawn in? Let me check. Doesn't say anything on here. Oh, this is gonna kill me if I don't know. But anyway, she was purchased for preservation as part of the national collection, and she's currently owned by the National Railway Museum in York. Now let's take a look at this bad girl. Now, I must be wondering why steam engines often referred to as a she. I mean, just I'm not sure how well you can see it when I'm holding it. Better than I'm on my knees. Now take a look at this. Isn't she stunning in the apple green livery? There's a banjo dome right here. We'll come to that in a minute. Let's take a look at the front bogey wheel itself. You can see it's only it's only two wheels instead of four. And there's a 
there's a vacuum pipe here, which all steam engines have. And it has strong buffers. And you can see it is got the six main driving wheels. And this is a two wheels on the rear. Oh, one thing you may notice is this is a split chassis version instead of the updated solid one. Mind you, if I was to think about getting a solid chassis version of this model, I might think about getting that if I want to think about selling this one. In the meantime, let's take a look at the number plate. As you can see, it's 4771, which in BR days it was renumbered as 60800, which I remember seeing it in the BR green. Let's see here. I'm not sure how well you can read it. The work, worker plates. It says, actually, it'll be better if I place it on the table and get a good view of it. If you want to read the number plates. Well, one thing you may notice is I'm filming this with my HCV130 camera instead of my SDR-S70. If you remember my Let's Plays of the Doom games, my SDR-S70 had a little fault in its screen. I don't know if I might think about showing you that in my next review. But let's take a look at the worker plates here. It says... Eight, number 87. Doncaster, 1936, and you can, oh yeah, one thing you may notice is she has that, she has that A4 slash P2 style cab, which, by the way, the, I think the P2s had that cab the first time, and let's take a look at the cab itself, let's see, I don't know how well you can see it, from this angle, I mean the cab's not well detailed, but you can tell where everything is by the, where, Firebox. No. Imagine it'd be better if I move the camera back a little bit. You can see I'm not sure if you can see the regulators and you can clearly see the firebox. And everything like that. And the regulators. Did I already mention that? Let's take a look here. There's the handrails. We have to take extremely care. Take, take extremely care of them. But unfortunately, the roof vents here don't open, but uh, that's just the thing about Pac-Man. You have to keep the costs down. You can see that, that there's the whistle. And there's these washout plugs. And, one, and there's, that's a banjo dome right here, which all LNR engines had. Oh yeah, one thing you have to know is that these, if these V2s were the first engines to have banjo domes. And you can see the overhead wires here, which means that this engine is like certified for mainline running, although it was until like 2006. And if you remember, after that she was confined to running on preserved lines. It's until her boiler certificate ran out in 2008, where it did when it was doing that spring gal on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, if you if you remember. Let me get the tent up here so you can have a good view at it. As you can see, Green now it did perform well at the Spring Gala on the North Yorkshire Moors line, but it had problems with a boiler tube and had to be, and the boiler had to be repaired. And then after her boiler certificate expired, she went back to being on the static display, first at the NRM site at Shieldon, and then she was moved back to York. Although currently she is on static display, although at this very moment she's back up in the Shieldon. But I don't know when she, I don't know when she'll be back in York, but they're probably raising like trying to raise like funds to get her back up and running. Although they may do that after they restored Flying Scotsman to operating condition. But in the meantime, let's get on with the review. Let's get the tender out again. Let's see here. You can see the nameplate Green Arrow on here, which is like the style seen on the A4s and the Peppercorn A1s. And this is a single chimney which they had, which, by the way, these V2s are like the smaller variants of the LNR A3s. I mean, let me just take a good front view at it. Now, isn't the front magnificent? It's similar to Flying Scotsman a little bit, except with the number plates and the lamp irons. And without the number plate with the BR number on it. 
and that's that lamp I have for the headboard and the, or one of the lamps. And, and let's take a look at the other side, which the other side is basically the same. Anyway, but let's just get let's put the locomotive from one side and let's move on with the tender. Now the tender is a bit different from what we've seen on the A3s and the A4s. But as you can see here it has that let's see where's my finger oh, yeah. it has that curve on the end here. You can see it's got L and E R on it. Now this is like the thing that most people complain about by putting a coupling it with the V2s. I mean I never had problems with it before, but let's take a look here. You can see this is where the fireman shovels that call into the firebox. And once again there's there's the overhead wires, which sort of which means it's like it can run on the main line, you know, the whole main line specials, and that there's a coal here which goes into the firebox, you know, to keep the engine going. But the thing about running steam engines on the main line is that they need water and coal, and this is the tank for the water. Not sure if the coal is removable. Nah, I don't think it'll be worth it, worth showing you that. And there's the overhead wires on the back again. It just makes people basically warns people that there are wires above the engine when it's on the main line. You know, when the you know when modern trains run on it, like the Pendolinos and the Voyagers. And once again there's strong buffers on here. And as you can see it looks magnificent in the apple green livery. Here. Sorry about that. So anyway, anyway. So anyway, do you like this review of Green Arrow? If so, click here to, to subscribe. And also, you maybe one. Also, if you know, I'm. I was to create like a GoFundMe campaign to buy the A3 Pacific Booklaw from Hornby, which kind of looks like Flying Scotsman, which is in the same kind of colour as this one, Green Arrow. But if you try to find the campaign, click on. I'll put a link on the video to see if you can find it. So, anyway, until next time, I'll, I'll probably do my next review on the Hornby 70th anniversary model of Duchess of Hamilton. Until then, bye!